गुड मॉर्निंग ताओ ओवरफ्लोज विवेकानंद एंटर्स समाधि अ फ्लावर दैट हैज ब्लॉसम्ड ऑन ट्वेल्थ ऑफ जनवरी 1863 सिक्सटी थ्री रिटर्न्स टू इट्स सीट फॉर्म ऑन फोर्थ ऑफ जुलाई 1902. इट वॉज ए मेमोरेबल डे ऑन दिस डे इन द ईयर 1902 Swami Vivekananda attained Maha Samadhi at about 9 p.m. while he was in meditation the flame of his life lamp that brightened the spiritual world suddenly blew out in the deep darkness of the night his last day was like any other normal day on his last day swami ji woke up early and went to the shrine of ram krishna for his meditation unlike other days he took more time to complete the meditation after finishing his meditation at 11 am he went out and asked his disciples to arrange for a prayer for kali mother kali in the afternoon he enjoyed a hearty meal as lunch after lunch he took a 3 hour class of sanskrit grammar for the inmates of belur math perhaps he knew that it was his last day with his disciples he made the class very interesting and educative as though he wanted to give out everything he knew on in one day in the evening vivekanand returned to his room tired and exhausted he meditated for an hour or so after his meditation he felt a strong suffocation as though his breath was getting heavier he asked his attendant to open all the doors and windows swami ji lay down on his bed with the rosary in his hand chanting the holy name of his master as his atten- attendant was massaging his feet he went into deep sleep at 9 pm blood came out rushing from his nostrils and mouth his body became still and cold according to yoga scriptures an enlightened yogi passes out through the opening of on top of the head that is brahmarandra causing blood to flow in the nostrils and the mouth about such incident when was mentioned to nakshbandi shah abdul ghani khan he said when at the time of the cremation or the death blood rushes from the eye nostril or mouth it indicates that the person has sacrificed himself at divine altar when nivedita who was very close to vivekanand introducing introduces many significant facts in connection with swami ji's passing away and his full knowledge of it she writes when june closed however he knew knew well that the end was near i am making ready for death he said to one of his one who was with him on wednesday before he entered samadhi a great austerity and meditation has come upon me and i am making ready for the final descent and we who did not dream that he would leave us till at last till at least some 3 or 4 years have passed knew nevertheless the words were true news of the world came as a far away rejoinder from him at this time a word of anxiety as to the scarcity of rains seems almost to pass away by a dream it was useless to ask him now for the opinion on the questions of the day you may be right he said quietly but i cannot enter any more into these matters i am going down 
in death. Once in Kashmir, after an attack of illness, I had seen him lift a bundle of pebbles, saying, Whenever death approaches me, all weaknesses vanishes. I have neither fear nor doubt nor any thought of the external. I am simply busy myself making ready to enter the final descent. I am as hard as that and the stones struck one another in his hand but I have touched the feet of God. Personal revolutions was so rare with him that these words could never be forgotten again on returning from the cave of Amarnath in that very same summer of 1808 he had said laughingly <coughs> that he had there received the grace of Amarnath not to die till he himself should will to do so. Now this seeming to seeming to promise that death would never take him by surprise has corresponded so well with the prophecy of Ram Krishna that when he should know who and what he was he would refuse to remain a moment longer in the body that one had vanished from one's mind all anxiety on that score and even on his grave and significant words at the present time did not suffice to revive it. Did we not remember moreover the story of the great Nirvikalp Samadhi on his youth and how when it was open over Ramakrishna said this is your mango book I have locked it in my box and you shall taste it once more when your work is finished. And we may wait for that, said the monk who told me the tale, we shall know when the time is near for he will tell us that again he has tasted his mango. How strange it seems now, looking back at that time to realize in how many ways he expected how many ways the expected hint was given only to fall the deaf ears and the minds that could not understand. It would seem indeed that in his withdrawal from all weaknesses and attachments there was only one exception. <clears throat> that which had never been dearer to him than life kept still its power to move him. It was the last Sunday before the end he said to one of his disciples, you know the work is always my weak point. When I think that might come to an end, I am all undone. This always happens. The master realizes he stays here to complete the work that has been assigned to him. And the moment that work is over, he does not want to stay a moment longer in life. On Wednesday, the same week, the day being Ek Ekadasi, the first day, 11th day of the lunar cycle, he himself keeping the fast in all strictness, he insisted on serving the morning meal to the same disciple. Each disciple as it was offered boiled seeds of jackfruit, boiled potatoes, plain rice and ice cold milk from the subject of the playful chat. And finally, to end the meal, he himself poured the water over the hands and dried them with a towel. It is I who should do these things to you, Swamiji said, not you for me. 
was the protest naturally offered, but his answer was a startling in the solemnity. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. Didn't Jesus wash the feet of his disciples? Something checked the answer, but that was the last time as it rose to the lips and the words remain unuttered. This was when, for here also, the last time had come. There was nothing sad or grave about Swamiji's du Swamiji during these days. In the midst of anxiety about over-fatiguing him, in spite of conversation, deliberately kept as light as possible, touching only upon the animals that surrounded him, his garden experiments, his garden ex experiments, books, and absent friends, over and beyond all this, one was conscious the while of a luminous presence of which this bodily form seemed only a shadow or a symbol, a shadow of the light of his master. Never had one felt so strongly as now before him that one stood on the threshold of an infinite light, yet none was prepared. L least of all, that last happy Friday, July 4th, on which he appeared so much stronger and better than he had been for years to see the end so soon. On the day of Mahasamadhi himself, whether consciously or intuitively, his actions were most deliberate and full of meaning. His solitary meditation for three hours in the morning from 8 to 11 was most striking one. He rose rather early that day and after partaking of his tea, entered the chapel of monastery. After some time, it was noticed that he had closed all the windows and had bolted all the doors that transpired there. No one will ever know. In his meditation, his own master and the Divine Mother to his own realization, one and the same personality must have been present for when he had finished his book forth in the touching song in which the highest gyan, the awakening, mingled with highest devotion or bhakti. Thus the flower that has blossomed on 12th of January 1863, returned to its seed form on this day, July 4th, 1902. A, an incredible book that appeared released from the Divine Library on 12th of January 1863, returned back on this day, July 4th, 1902 to the Divine Library. Lucky are those who got a moment or so to read a page or a line or a paragraph of that book. Only enough for now.